Today, we're going to talk about how I reversed my own heart disease. Today, I am the patient, and my host is the one and only Dr. Brett Nolan, who's a friend of mine and also a cardiovascular expert physician, and he's also a lipidologist. Welcome, Brett. Thank you so much, Tom. Thanks for having me again. This is always a great pleasure. Yeah, so let me introduce further Dr. Nolan has been a friend of mine and a colleague of mine as he is a cardiologist and a lipidologist and we send so many patients to him. So I want you guys to also understand where you can potentially reach him and to understand more of his, his teachings and to access him and his team as a physician in the Northeast. So let's go into the story here. I'm a 59 year old guy this year Everyone knows that I've been on testosterone and some steroids for over 30 years, and I got into this world as an internal medicine primary care doctor. I was worried about my own health because I was on steroids, and the priority of my health was heart disease. I don't know why. I just worried about that. Maybe back in the 80s, we saw in the 90s, we saw the WWFE wrestlers dying from heart disease you know, having heart attacks and then some bodybuilders, of course, but way, way back. And I just worried. I put things together and I said, shit, I'm on testosterone and some steroids. I love it for this kind of stuff, but I don't want to have a heart attack. So I went to med school and residency. I became an internal medicine doctor, humbly. Now, when I was 42 years old, remember I'm 59, I checked my first coronary artery calcium score, but I did it through a means of a CT angiogram way back when. This is 2006, November. And I had a little plaque in the LAD called 15. It was, it was in a gas store of 15. Everything else was fine. So I walked away from that. And then I knew that I went to my cardiology doctors. I didn't know Dr. Nolan then. I went to my buddies who were, who were fellows because we just got out of the residency training program, University of Connecticut. And I said, guys, holy shit, what is this? And they said, ah, it's, you got a little plaque in the artery, Tom. I was like, I'm only 42. And they were like, well, stop the steroids, lose some weight, take care of your blood pressure, eat great, exercise, and take a little bit of this medicine called a statin. So, okay, guys, all right, I'm a doctor too. So I go on my way and I lose a little, I do lose weight, I do the health you know, the, the health uh, behavior changes, you know, the weight loss. I don't, I don't have a problem with drugs or alcohol. I don't smoke, thank God. So I'm just basically eating and I'm on testosterone. I'm trying to keep it to a down low. But I did add statins. Now, this is, again, 2006. We're going to move up to, to uh, 2019 where I checked another calcium score. So in that time span, in all those years, I was on some statin, but I didn't take very much. I was scared because of the muscle aches and my brain, right? And even the sex. I was believing the potential that side effects could happen significantly from statins. Meanwhile, I'm a primary care doctor. Because remember, over the years, these things have changed. So I'm taking my statin, but I wasn't taking enough. My LDL naturally is 130s, and I'm, I'm taking it. I'm, maybe my LDL was like 90, you know, on maybe 10 milligrams of atorvastatin. Okay, I didn't. I wasn't taking too much, and my blood pressure was still 130, 140 over 80 to 90, maybe even worse, because I wasn't taking the ACE or the A, the, the the ACE inhibitor or the ARB. I wasn't taking it seriously because I thought it would make me weak, and I just didn't believe it. it's true. So, but I was I was on some statins, and I was trying to keep everything as great as I could. Now I go back to the CT scanner. And it's 2019. It goes from 15 to 32.3. Okay. Now, in the real world, guys, in, in the scientific world, that ain't nothing. Guys, I went to Dr. Nolan because now he's a friend of mine. I'm working with him as a doctor locally in Connecticut. I'm referring my patients to him as a cardiologist. And lipid, we're getting more into this lipid. We're really realizing that there's a whole day job just dealing with this stuff. <laughs> So, and that's just the day job. You know, this like you could finish your whole day on, I knew Dr. Thompson, but now there's this other guy named Dr. Nolan. So we get hooked up and I, I talk to him and he goes, well, Tom, you know, you're, 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 you're on some statin, you're getting older. It, it went from 15 to 20, 32. 
most doctors are going to say it's, it's okay, but we don't know how stable it is. So long story short, I'm going to, I move on. I, Dr. Nolan says, I want you to be more aggressive with your ABCDs. So I go on medications. I go on metformin for the hemoglobin A1C because I was getting a little heavier. My A1C was almost 5'7", 5'5", 5'6". I cut my diet. I took metformin. But I took the B is blood pressure. I took bistolic, nabivalol, and telmisartan. And then C, the cholesterol. I took statin, robostatin every other day because you could do alternative regimens. And I started using a medicine called a PCSK9 Repatha. And I went back to the CT scanner, went back to the CT scanner this year in February 16, 2023, the LAD lesion went down by 20%. One of the first phone calls I made after I called my wife and my mother, I called Brett Nolan. He said, congratulations. Welcome to today's talk. Brett, I delipified. We don't we know we don't need to delipify, but I wanted to do it. Can you talk about everything I did? You have the floor. Absolutely. Well, it that's a it's a great story and it's a great illustration because it's a real story, right? Uh, and it and it I think it really highlights how to identify disease, picking picking the person that should be on medications in addition to lifestyle changes and let's face it these tests can also pick who shouldn't be on medication some people are over medicated and then following up to see whether there's progression or change and then doubling down because we have tremendous tools available today to to modify the natural history of plaque right and then actually doing those things and it's not really complicated at the end of the day, but it's sort of putting all the pieces together, right? And realizing that that one piece doesn't substitute for the other piece. So, you know, the, the start of your story there, which, which frankly I think is the most important, is screening yourself for heart disease. Because you're absolutely right that you should be concerned about heart disease. It is the most common reason that people die. It's the biggest killer worldwide and in the United States, right? Uh, and it dwarfs all cancer deaths combined. Um, it should be the number one focus. And it should be focused on early, like you did it. You know, 42 is absolutely not too young. Uh, because, you know, in this day and age with using tools like the coronary calcium scan, which is the best tool we have for screening, the downsides are almost negligible. It's very low radiation study and you're not getting any injections or contrast of these things. And the idea is if you look early and you find plaque, meaning a calcium score that is anything other than zero, guess what? You've you've crossed you've crossed a line, you've crossed a Rubicon that says that the combination of your blood biochemistry and your blood vessel lining, which is called your endothelium, those two things interacting are forming plaque. And so you should do something different now to modify that interaction, right? Um, and, you know, you touched on some of the important things there. If you look at the, the sort of lifestyle factors that you have done and are so important, so don't smoke. And if you do smoke, stop smoking. I mean, that, that is a really clear, obvious one. Uh, uh, taking, paying attention to your blood sugar and managing your blood sugar mostly through your diet. So not eating excessive processed foods and sugars and refined carbohydrates and sugary drinks and all these kinds of things, uh, you know, uh, that, that is a separate mechanism of risk reduction. And we know that people who are diabetic or, or leading into diabetes, at every step of the way, they're at higher risk. So, you know, this also plays into this concept that the things that you do with your lifestyle. Something else that you've done is exercise regularly, right? Excellent for your cardiovascular health and your overall health, no question about it. Those things, those lifestyle factors are incredibly important, but the, the mechanism by which they modify risk is something separate and distinct from medications, right? And, and one really isn't a substitute for the other. They are all different facets 
of modifying your risk. Uh, and you know, I talk to people about this a lot. You know, if you are interested in maximum risk reduction, if you have plaque, some people are medication shy, right? For lots of reasons, they you know worry about side effects, or they've actually had side effects, or family members, or these sorts of things, and that's completely understandable. And and I think broadly speaking, people are over medicated. But that's why if you use tests to look for plaque, like the calcium scan, you are picking the right people to add medication, and you're also picking the right people to say, no, no, no medication, you don't need that, right? And we actually know, by the way, in population studies, that if you calcium scan a population, you will actually de-risk more people than you will enhance their risk. So you actually have a higher chance of being reassured and being spared medication if you screen yourself for plaque. Uh, but of course, what that means is we're, we're narrowing the band of people that we're thinking about adding meds, and, and we're being more precise about it, but we're picking the right people, and then we're being aggressive with those people, right? So then, you know, those lifestyle factors um, aside, now you come to, well, the medications that can make a difference. So absolutely, treating and lowering your cholesterol specifically with medications has a massive impact on plaque and you know we have this data with statins we have this data with you know ezetimibe or zedia and we have this data with the pcsk9 inhibitors like rapatha if you sufficiently lower your cholesterol you can start to demonstrate plaque shrinkage or regression and if you get your ldl down to about 30 about two-thirds of people are actually reversing or shrinking or regressing plaque, right? Um, and so, again, what you did is you used a statin. And look, statins are great drugs, but not for everyone. Some people don't get on with them. They have musculaics, as you pointed out. Some people have concentration effects on the statins. So they are certainly worth a try if you have disease, and most people do great on them. But if you don't do great on them, we have a ton of options on hand in this day and age. And so it absolutely doesn't need to stay there, and you don't need to blast yourself in the face with statins because we have these other tremendous right. tools, right? So, again, coming back to your story, you used the statin and you used you know, what, what was tolerable and acceptable to you, right? And then you added the, the PCSK9 inhibitor, the Rapatha. You know, very well-tolerated drugs, very safe and efficacious, excellent data for reducing heart attacks and strokes, peripheral arterial disease, uh, and, and as I said, very good data for modifying plaque. Uh, and then something else that you added on there, again, a different facet, is Vasipo, or this medication called icosabenethyl, which is something that's derived just from fish oil, nothing else. It's just very, very highly purified omega-3s, um, one called EPA. That also is a separate facet for modifying your risk, and you've been using that. Uh, and that also, independently from the cholesterol, independently from diet, exercise, has data for plaque reversal or regression when it's added. Right? So, you know, and, and you know, this is what you've been on. There's a whole nother world now, thankfully, for people who are diabetic. We now have diabetic medications that have excellent data for for reducing cardiovascular risk, reducing cardiovascular death. These are drugs like Jardiance, Farsiga, uh, you know, the injectable drugs like Ozempic, Trulicity. Uh, you know, again, these are not for everyone. But the idea of this is don't give everything to everyone. Find the right people with plaque and hammer those people, right? And again, also to, to just sort of underscore that idea of if you are interested in maximum risk reduction, it is a combination of your lifestyle choices and these medications. And one does yeah. not substitute for the other, and they do different things for your health, right? Uh, and as I said, I, I think you're an, an excellent example. You know, frankly, what happened to you is actually very uncommon in a good way. Uh, you know, typically when we measure coronary calcium scores and there's presence of mm. calcium, we, we do those follow-up scans to look for no significant progression because most people won't actually 
lower their calcium score. They, we hope to just sort of attenuate it or you know, s stop it from, from accelerating and getting worse. But, but you, you're not completely unique, but you're, you're one of the <laughs> rarefied air patients that I have that have actually shown a lower calcium score. Um, and again, I, because you've been paying attention to all these facets, you, know, you mentioned your blood pressure and paying attention to the control of your blood pressure, uh, and all of these things have paid off for you, right? It's, a, it's an excellent lesson. Uh, and, you know, something else that's obviously, you know, within your wheelhouse is you are on testosterone therapy. You're, you're not, you know, you're not shy about that. And you're on physiological testosterone replacement, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So you're not someone that's ha you know, hammering testosterone right now because you want to get huge. You're maintaining your testosterone in a normal level. Uh, and this is alongside with what you've been doing, and this this hasn't hurt you in any way. I mean, your 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 overall markers of cardiovascular health have improved, right? So you know, also just to underscore that, the uh, if appropriately used, again in the selected patients that need it because their testosterone right. is low and they're symptomatic, uh, th this can be absolutely uh, well, analogous with good health, right? But what, what I, so, boy, thank you so much, Dr. Nolan, for this, it's like a sermon, you know, it's always like a sermon, you know, when you do this stuff. Hopefully a good one. <laughs> it, it's a good, it's just, this is, this is just what it is, because I live this stuff. So the ABCDs, the hemoglobin A1C, the B blood pressure, the C cholesterol, calcium score, cardiac, echocardiography, you know, A, B, C, C, A, blood pressure, B, a B blood pressure, C, cholesterol, D is the deposition. D is, is deposition and depression. You know, so and then the S, A, B, C, Ds is screening colorectal, you know, because I'm a primary care guy. Sure. So, you know, for men on the androgen. So if you hit the A, B, C, Ds, but today we're looking mainly at the A, B, Cs. And yeah. I hammered on those with medications in addition. I didn't, I kept my testosterone dose the same. I didn't take extra. I did steroids in the past, but I said to myself, I don't want to have a heart attack. I'm old enough now. Huh, I don't need to do that anymore. I'm happy with just this. And that's I'm showing the world that I'm almost 60. And if you do this stuff, guys, you can have some of this with testosterone, with all the other good things, wink, 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 <laughs> sex. You know, if it, I mean, it, and energy levels and all this kind of, but it's, again, like you said, it's the select man. You have to select the right guy. If your testosterone is normal, you're going to get, is it worth being shut down? And is it worth it? Look at all the, a lot of guys come to me over years for consults and they say, doc, I love you. I'm done. It's too much work. I'm like, well, then right. It's, is it, do you realize that if you go on testosterone, in my opinion, you have to be aggressive with the ABCDs. <laughs> if you're not, you're going to have a problem. So that's why I made the Anabolic Doc app, obviously, right here, to give it for all men in the world appropriately. It's information. It's not advice. It's just informational stuff. I'm like an influencer for these guys. But Dr. Nolan, so you elucidated perfectly. Guys, give comments. Come on the app. Come to the meetings we have. I'm hoping to get more doctors like Dr. Nolan actually somehow potentially maybe on the app because it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So you could have more information from these guys. But you have him in, in the world. You could see his information. Let's close on this, Dr. Nolan. Where is the future of staging heart disease? Let's talk about that. The calcium score is crude. Tell us the, the calcium score indications, who should be on it, who should do it, and then what's the future of staging? You got it. You got it. So, you know, if you ask my opinion, I always joke with people that um, uh, if you have a heartbeat, you should have a calcium scan. <laughs> Quite simply, I, there, is, there is literally no downside to having a coronary calcium scan. Uh, you either get reassured that you are good and you have no plaque, or you get sometimes caught by surprise and you do have plaque. But guess what? Then you are finding it early and now you have time to step in before you have that heart attack, that sudden cardiac death, ending up with heart failure and, you know, a sucking wind when you're walking up half a flight of stairs and all this awful stuff that happens, you know, at the far end of cardiology, which you want to avoid as much as you can, right? 
So the calcium scan is a tremendous screening tool. And sometimes people worry, uh, am I too young, all this kind of thing. Uh, you know, there are nuances to using it. But, but as I said, I, I think the broad concept is uh, there's really very, very few people that it's inappropriate to use. It, it's something that can absolutely be used. You know, I, I scan people in their 20s, I scan people in their 80s, uh, anywhere in between, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's what we have now, and the data for it is excellent. But of course, where we want to get to is being able to assess for things like soft plaque, um, and we can do that right now with coronary CTA, and coronary CTA gives you better data. No question about it. But that comes with significantly more radiation and contrast dye and expense. Uh, and so it's a great tool, but it's not for everyone. That's not something to screen with, right? You want to you be aware of both risks and benefits there. But along with that, and the technology for that progressively gets better and, and radiation doses come down and all these things, which is excellent, but now they're working on tools, and in fact, we have commercial tools available that not only identify plaque, but identify features of plaque. And, and we, we know in, in the research setting that you know, there are types of plaque that are stable, and there are types of plaque that are unstable. Uh, you know, all these things, microcalcification and thin collars and you know, lots of volume within the plaque, all these sorts of things. Now, really, where the future is going, and, and pretty quickly and pretty soon, frankly, is, is we should and can image actually looking for plaque, both soft and hard plaque, and features of plaque. And now we will be able to be even more precise and targeted about picking up people that are, that are clearly high risk. As in, all right, not only do you have plaque, you have plaque that's ready to rupture and cause a heart attack. And guess what? You get full court press now because we know that that's going to happen, right? And, and so, you know, when we get to that point, we're going to be able to drill down even more and be even more personalized about, about the people we pick for all of these excellent therapies we have. And again, picking the people that we don't offer the therapies to because they don't need it. So we don't want to over-medicate them, right? Um, and, you know, the, the, it's very, very exciting because this stuff is accelerating as, as AI gets applied to these technologies and so it gets streamlined and it's, it's, it's fascinating the data that's coming out about this. Um, and, you know, not, not to get too caught in the future and technology, you know, never forgetting that, uh, you know, the simple things, making sure you exercise regularly, making sure you don't smoke, paying close attention to your diet, not worrying about the, the nonsense that we really need to put to bed about eating low-fat diets and all that garbage, but really focusing on diet, avoiding processed foods, avoiding excessive sugars, uh, you know, excessive carbohydrates. These are the things that are the major ills uh, in the diet in our modern era. Eating processed seed-derived oils, terrible for your health. And unfortunately, you know, big institutions still push this idea, which is, which is so old and tired and drives me crazy. But, you know, f focusing on those things which are simple but require sustained effort and sustained attention, sleeping well, or, uh, all these things, managing your, your stress, your depression, your emotional level, these are all hugely important things. And frankly, everyone should be doing those things because that's under your control without needing a prescription pad or what have you. Uh, you know, so everyone should be doing that as much as they can and if that's all you need, excellent. Maintain your health. And then finding those people that are, you know, over and above that risk and then medicating those people and, as I said, hopefully completely ameliorating and obliterating people having heart attacks and dying and, you know, dropping dead in front of your family and these awful events that, unfortunately, I've, I've been part of a lot. Um, you know, we have, we, we have the tools. We have the tools. We just need to and, and, and that's, identify. And that's it. Yeah, Dr. Nolan summed it up. Guys, you need to take charge of your own health. And we're not pushing any medicines here. We're pushing, we're pushing a, a lifestyle that includes real behavior changes, sustainability, all science, right? From the diet, the exercise, all the way over cognitive behavioral therapy, you know, meditation and relaxation. How many men have we seen that have heart attacks that are the type A guy 
And on paper, he looks good. Blood pressure, cholesterol, he shouldn't have had that heart attack. Well, his only risk is he's super high powered. I, you've seen these men, I've seen these, and women too. You know, beyond the smoking and, and the carbohydrates and the obesity, everyone's getting the same message. But <clears throat> this day and age, it is, you need to know when to integrate these incredible, because we're doctors, these, when do you use this? And I did show that in four years, I delipified. I did do it. I wanted to see zero, but I was, I was a little bit, Kind of, I almost fell when I was in front of the, you know, the machine. I took the, I think I pissed off the people that were in there because I shouldn't have been behind. But the sweetheart let me, you know, the technician was so excited because she was the same technician that four years before saw that I had the calcium score and it was up and then I was concerned. And now I went down and I said, I hope it's zero. And I went in, I held my breath, you know, for the 20 seconds and I came out. She goes, okay, are you ready? I go, oh my God, you're making me nervous. I went around into the control room and she, you know, the machine was formatting and then we almost thought it had a higher number because it was artifact and then it went down and we saw the LAD was there and we saw the number was low and I went, oh, I almost fell. I was so, I almost syncopized. And, and then I called you and, but it's, I, I wanted it to be zero. So my goal is to drive my plaque to zero. <laughs> I don't need to do it. I don't need to do it, but I'm doing it to show this one man with these technology, with all the technology applied properly. I have no side effects. I mean, I'm not bullshitting. I feel great. It's actually improved my mentation. It's improved my sex. I don't want to be weird to you guys because your sex is like a heart. Your cock is like a heart. It has nitric oxide. It, it just, you have to under, you have to believe it. <laughs> the, the medicines, the PD-5 inhibitors were discovered because of heart disease. <laughs> People don't understand it. But your brain has to be free and clear of depression, of stress. You, your sugars, your, your, your nerves have to be good. Your blood flow, of course, this is blood flow. So I can go on and on. Dr. Nolan, this is going to be so important to get out there to everyone. And we're going to interview again. When's the next interview? We'll think of something with the heart because I think this is really conclusive. Everything that we've done, how to get screened, how to not have a heart attack on testosterone and, and taking care of your risks, how to get screened. And now the future with the CT, angio, uh, the CT angiograms with the AI and the machine learning. And, and we're just, this is a bleeding edge, right? This is bleeding. You got it. Because it's, well, Tom, it's, it's, again, thanks for having me on and, and thank you so much for for pushing out this message because I mean it, it's so important I, I can't overstate how important it is uh, and it's awesome that you take this on and and sort of deliver this to the, to the people that follow you and and hopefully further and beyond so thank you this right. is great thank you Dr. Nolan thank you so much you're welcome thank you see you man